All right, so I had a customer bring me a Lorantz fish finder. This one is an LMS 525 CDF, but he didn't bring me any cords or cables. But he said he had it hooked up in his boat and something went haywire with the charging system and it charged up to like 18 or 20 volts and then this thing stopped working. So I thought I'd just go ahead and pop it open. It's got a bunch of torques. I think they're about T8s. I have a suspicion that these two large leads right here are the power leads because it does say power data right there. So we'll open it up and see if I see anything inside and maybe we can figure out which is positive, which is negative and supply 12 volts to it and see if it lights up or not. And it does open up slightly, so I'm wondering, are the leads just too short? Yes, I think the leads are too short on the connectors back there, so they do have nuts on them, so I'll just go ahead and pop off these nuts and hopefully they'll just drop through the case. So I ran out to my toolbox and I got a one inch and a 13 16 socket, so let's see if we can get these things open. Okay, now with any luck, the back will just lift off of this thing, and it does. So there is the insides of this unit. So I'm thinking these pins right there might actually be the power pins going in. I'll have to do a continuity check to find out. But anyhow, there it is. I'm not seeing anything off the bat that could be a problem. But, it's definitely got a couple little switch mode power supplies in it, that's for sure. So let's uh, just take a quick look around, see if I see anything that looks bad. Actually, those can't be the pins, so I'm thinking those have got to be the power. Oh, look, and a fuse right there, how perfect. Well, first thing, let's go ahead and check that 5 amp fuse, see how it tests. Okay, so I was mistaken, and that is a two amp fuse. So I'm gonna put my meter in the continuity mode. So if I short the leads, we'll get a beep and see zero ohms. And the fuse is open. So it looks like the positive lead goes straight to the fuse, across the fuse, and then to a reverse polarity protection diode. So let's go ahead and check that diode and make sure it's okay. I have my meter in the diode range now, and I wanna see a forward voltage drop in one direction and I see 0 0.151 volts in one direction. And I like to see open in the other direction, and I do, so that's perfectly fine. So next, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back in continuity, and I'm gonna check from this side of this coil, and get my leads oriented correctly, back to the negative input lead, and I do not wanna see a short. And I see one ohm, let's go to ohms and see what it says. Yeah, I'm seeing 0.6 ohms right there. So there's definitely a problem over here. Let's look on the other side of this coil and see if it's less than 0.6, and it is 0.4. So I'm seeing this big Zener diode right here. That might be a over voltage protection diode. And I'm seeing 0.3 ohms on it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing open. I know it's kind of hard to see. But there is the protection diode, 0.2 ohms at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this thing open and unsolder that diode and see if my short actually goes away. Okay, well there is the bottom of the board. And what's it gonna take to get to that diode? I'm gonna have to pull this shield off. It's only held on with three solder blobs, it looks like, and then that's it. Kapton tape is not even holding it down. So let's go ahead and pop that off. Oh, 
There we go, and it's off. So I'm going to use my ESR meter as a low ohm meter because it will read down to one one hundredth of an ohm. So I'm going to check these FETs first off before I unsolder anything. And I see 0 0.08 ohms on that one and 0 0.09, 0 0.10 on that one. And next we'll check across that Zener diode. And I'm seeing 0 0.07, 0 0.08 on it. So it is the lowest resistance that I have on the board, so I still feel somewhat confident that it might just be that Zener diode that is bad. So I'm going to add a little bit of fresh solder to it, because this is a double-sided board, and it will help melt the solder at a lower temperature, because I'm sure all this is lead-free solder, and that stuff doesn't melt for crap. I've got my tip up to 800 degrees and I can barely get the solder to take. There's so much of a ground land on this thing right now. I may have to come at it with a hot air blower and try to preheat the board at the same time. Yeah, I can't even get it to take. Well, I've got my solder sucker up to about 850 degrees, so let's see if we can get at least one pin desoldered on here. Oh, that worked perfect. Excellent. So checking it out of circuit, I see 0.2 ohms. That thing is bad. So let's go ahead and check in circuit now and see if our short is actually gone. So I'll check where the Zener diode used to live. And I see charging. That is absolutely perfect. Well, I think at a minimum, it's gonna need a new Zener diode. So let me go ahead and look up the specs on this diode real quick and see what it's actually rated at. Well, that never does come back to a 5-watt Zener diode, as I suspected, and the voltage is 33 volts. Seems kind of high to me, but what do I know? I didn't design this thing. Unfortunately, this exact replacement part is unavailable, so I'm going to have to find a substitute. Also, I need to find a replacement for that little 2-amp fuse. Now I do have some 1.5s, which would probably work in the application, but the manufacturer had a 2. I'm going to have to order some 2s and a Zener diode. But before I do that, I'm going to set my power supply to a current limiting mode, hook this thing back up. I'll give it a max current of 2 amps. I'm going to hook it up without the Zener diode and see if it actually fires up or if there's any other hidden damage I don't know about. So just in case everything goes catastrophically wrong, I do have a 2 amp Pico fuse right here, which is about the size of a quarter watt resistor. I'm going to go ahead and just parallel that with the square fuse that's in there now, and we'll give it 12 volts and see what happens. All right, so I do have the Pico fuse paralleled across the original 2 amp fuse, and I do believe that that's a time delay because it has a T on it. And I did figure out that those two large leads I referenced in the beginning are actually the power feeds. You can see them going in right here. So if I go ahead and I put my voltmeter and I measure the voltage, I am supplying this with 14 volts right now. And so I do see 13.9 volts, or it's about a one-tenth of a volt drop across that reverse polarity protection diode. I have everything connected with the exception of the ground shield right now. I did not reconnect the ground shield. So I'm just going to go ahead and flip this thing over and mash the power button and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Power on. Look at that. It's working. So the brightness is turned down on it, so I'm going to go ahead and use the light button to turn it back on to max brightness to make it easier to see. And it's telling me all the safety blah blah blahs, copyrights, data storage is low. And so let's go ahead and zoom in. And the GPS module is not responding, probably because the GPS module is not connected. But I'd say that's pretty close. Probably the last place this was when it died, up by Cottonwood, California, it looks like. Anyhow, it's about 60 miles from where I am. 
But I'll get the parts ordered pending customer's approval and we'll get this thing back in his boat finding some fish. All right, so I have a brand new 1N 5364 33 volt Zener diode. It's a five watt Zener diode and I have a brand new two amp time delay fuse. So let's go ahead and get those parts installed and hopefully it takes care of this problem. All right, there we go, fuse is installed. Let's go ahead and install the Zener diode now. Well, I must have forgot to hit the record button, but there the Zener diode is installed, all soldered in place, ready to go. You just gotta put it back together, fire it up, make sure everything works. All right, shield is mounted back in place. There we go, up and running, all back together. Definitely looks like a Windows operating system. But there it is, up and running. The Lowrance LMS 525CDF fish finder, up and running once again. A victim of over voltage. I certainly hope you enjoy the repair on the Lowrance fish finder, LMS 525CDF. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, norcal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Be patient. I do have a full-time job, and I do this in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.